This is a 2019 Ford GT, and it's an automotive icon and one of the most amazing modern supercars. These are incredibly rare, crazy looking, tremendously fast, everything that makes for a truly special car. Today, I'm going to review this Ford GT and show you all of its interesting quirks and features. <laughs> Before I get started, big news, this Ford GT is currently for sale, being auctioned live on cars and bids. This is a 2019 Ford GT. It's a rare carbon series model with some recent servicing and just over 10,000 miles, which is unusual for these. And you can buy it on cars and bids. So once you finish watching this video, click the link in the description to head over to the live live auction for this Ford GT where you can bid on it and buy it, one of the most iconic, amazing modern supercars, only on cars and bids. All right, time for the quirks and features of the new Ford GT, but first a little explanation. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably know I've already reviewed a new Ford GT. In fact, I've already reviewed this new Ford GT. So why am I doing it again? Well, for one thing, that video was four years ago, and so I figured it might be time for a little refresher on one of the greatest modern supercars. Also, my format was a little different back then, a little more detailed and maybe a little slower, so I figured I'd re-review this car and check out the highlights since it's so special. And since the owner of the car has decided to sell it and is selling it on cars and bids, the stars aligned for me to be able to re-review the new Ford GT. And also, why would I say no to checking out such a special car? So, the quirks and features. And let's start with maybe the most controversial quirk slash feature of this car, and that would be the powertrain. No, it does not have a V like the Ford GTs that came before. Instead, it's a turbocharged EcoBoost V6, three and a half liter V6, sort of similar to what you would find in a Ford F-150 Raptor pickup truck. Here it is in a million dollar supercar. But while the V6 has indeed been controversial, the numbers speak for themselves. 650 horsepower, 550 pound-feet of torque, zero to 60 in three seconds, which is tremendously fast, and this will do a quarter mile in the high 10 second range, which is also tremendously fast. Now, part of that is due to this impressive V6, but it's also because of this car's transmission. You have a seven speed dual clutch automatic with insanely quick shifts that mates with the engine for some serious performance numbers. But while the powertrain has certainly been controversial and it's a big deal on this car, the other big story with the new Ford GT is aerodynamics. And from your angle, you can very clearly see why. This car has a giant hole in the side of it. It has a shape unlike basically any other car on the road. The main body section is a teardrop shape that includes the cockpit and then the engine and it sort of tapers off towards the rear of the car. And that leaves giant openings on the side for these massive air channels that go down the teardrop shape. And you can see body panel pillars coming off from the roof above the cockpit to the side of the car, but leaving a huge hole for a giant air channel going down either side of the teardrop. It is something unlike any other vehicle has a totally crazy and insane design, the Ford GT. And you can see those holes continue in back. You have the rear spoiler going over the very bottom of the teardrop with holes on either side to allow for that giant air channel to let air pass through it for optimized aerodynamics. Now, amazingly, despite the fact that there's a hole in the side of the car, there is also an air intake in the side of the car. You can see it here and it's on the outside of the hole. So you have the body and then a hole for the air channel and then the air intake. Again, 
again, a totally crazy piece of design, this car, the way it all comes together, and it's amazing to check it out up close. But as cool as all of that aerodynamic stuff is, my very favorite air-related feature in this car is in the taillights. You can see there are circles, which is a heritage thing. Previous Ford GT, GT40 models have had circular taillights, but here they got holes in the center of them. Those are functional. They're air channels that help dissipate heat from the engine. Heat comes off the engine, works its way through ducting, and then comes out the middle of the taillights, so these circles are actually functional with heat dissipation in between. Amazing design. But anyway, since we're talking about the engine, let's get into the engine compartment and go over its many quirks and features, starting with simply opening it up, where you just tap this button on the key fob. This is a normal Ford key fob like you'd get for any Ford model, except on the back it says GT instead of just the Ford logo, but otherwise identical to every other Ford, right down to pressing the trunk button twice to open up this rear compartment just like you do on your Fusion. <laughs> you do it in your million dollar Ford GT. So anyway, you press it twice, it pops open, and then you lift it up, and that's how you get into the engine compartment. So you get into the engine compartment and you can see the mighty V6, and I'm not kidding, it really is mighty, even though it's only a V6. In fact, it doesn't really sound like a V6, it sounds quite a bit angrier. Take a listen. <laughs> But despite that muscular supercar sound, it is indeed a V6, and it says EcoBoost on it as a reminder, just in case you forgot. It also says Powered by Ford, which is a cool touch that Ford has put on some of its performance car engines in the past, including this one. I also love the oil cap, which says GT, right in the middle, facing the right direction. Kind of cool to see that there. Now, the other thing that's worth pointing out in this engine compartment is that it shares this space with the storage compartment. This is the trunk in this car, and indeed, this is the only storage compartment you get. It is tremendously small, as you can see. Very tiny, but that is your trunk. This is not meant to be a practical car, and that is underscored by this tiny storage compartment. And about a quarter of the storage compartment is taken up from the factory by this little zippered bag they give you. It includes, number one, a tire inflator kit, since this obviously doesn't come with a spare. There's no room, and also your owner's manual is in here. This is the only place it made sense to stick the owner's manual because there's no glove box. I'm telling you, this car has basically no storage, so your owner's manual is inside a zippered bag in your tiny trunk in the Ford GT. Now, a couple of other interesting things in the cargo compartment back here. For one, if this little plastic circular panel, this is a charge port, so you can plug the car in to keep it on a battery tender when you're not using it. A lot of these end up in collections, not driven all that often, so it makes sense to have that there. You can keep the battery charged and it won't die. Also interesting in the cargo compartment is closing it. This rear compartment lid is tremendously light. You can see it's carbon fiber, very easy to move around, easy to open and close, but to close it, the latch is in the center of the bottom of the cargo compartment, not at the very bottom. So you have to push on the exact right spot in order to make sure that it latches, and it's not exactly where you'd think, a little quirk to the Ford GT. And by the way, on the subject of opening compartments, the fuel door is interesting in this car because it's located here, which is very much, well, inside the body. Because of the teardrop shape, it's mounted like a foot in from the outside of the body. So when you go to put fuel in this car, you gotta be a little careful. You don't drip it on a lot of paintwork or scrape the fuel nozzle on the car. It's a little bit of a strange placement that takes some getting used to, but that's where it's located. And you can see this car has Ford's capless fuel filling system, just like a Taurus or a Focus. And again, on the subject of stuff that opens in this car, Let's discuss the front compartment, which, unlike a lot of other modern supercars, does in fact open. There's a little latch you pull in the driver's foot well. It's hidden away, hard to find, but you pull it, it gets the front compartment to here, and then there's another latch here, and you can lift the front compartment open. There's even a little prop where you can 
put it up and keep it in place. Now, as you can see, this front compartment is not for storage. Like I said, not a practical car, not much storage, and this compartment is devoted solely to mechanical stuff. You can see washer fluid goes in here, various other fluids, some other mechanical components, but no storage up front. But that's the front storage compartment in the new Ford GT. But anyway, next we move on to the most important opening compartment in the new Ford GT, and that would be the door. Now, before I get into how to open the door, take a look at this black panel next to the door, which has an interesting function. When you unlock the door, it shows a little lock that's been unlocked. And when you lock the door, it shows a little lock that's been locked. This doesn't stay lit forever, but if you want to lock the car and walk away and make sure it's locked, you can check that panel. And for a few seconds, the lock stays up to let you know it's locked. Or if you're approaching the car, you're not sure you hit the unlock button, you can check the panel and it shows. Rather interesting quirk on the outside of this car. But opening the door, walk up to the door, no immediately obvious door handle. Instead, you insert your hand into this panel next to the door. When you do that, it electronically pops the door open, and then you can stick your hand further in and open up the door from there. And of course, the doors in this car are scissor doors, meaning they open upwards, like the doors to most supercars, to add some drama and some coolness to the new Ford GT. Now, there are a lot of interesting quirks and features and crazy small details in this interior but probably the most interesting is the fact that the seats do not move. The seats in this car are fixed in place. You can't move them forward, backward, up, down. They don't move at all. Now, the reason for this is because of the positioning of the windshield. To maximize aerodynamics, Ford needed the windshield to come as far back as possible. But there are safety regulations that dictate just how close a person can sit to the top of a windshield. And in this car, it was going to be cutting it close, so they fixed the seats in place in order to maximize the arrow on the windshield. Now, you might be wondering, what happens if you sit in this car and the seat isn't in a comfortable spot? Well, the answer is you can move the steering wheel and the pedals. So you move everything else, but the seats stay put. To move the steering wheel, it's just a simple latch on the steering column. You pull it, and you can move the steering wheel up, down, forward, backward, pretty common. The pedals are more interesting. There's a little fabric loop in the driver's foot well, as you can see, and from there, you can kind of use your feet to guide the placement of the pedal box forward or backward, depending on where it's comfortable for you. But maybe more interesting than the fixed seats is the steering wheel, which is totally crazy and unlike anything you'll find in just about any other car. For one thing, it's not a wheel. The top and bottom are both flat, like a race car, but more importantly, it just has so much stuff on it. Over on the right side, the bottom, you have your volume control, two individual buttons for plus and minus volume. Above that, you have your controls for the gauge cluster screen to scroll through various icons on the screen, various prompts. You have your little back, OK, that sort of thing. Above that, this little button with an arrow to the right, that's your turn signal. This car doesn't have traditional turn signal stocks. Instead, you control it with a button on the steering wheel. And of course, you have a similar button on the other side pointing to the left, which is obviously your left turn signal. And same deal with the windshield wipers. Again, no stock. You have this dial that you can twist that turns on your windshield wipers, and above that, a button for your windshield washer sprayer fluid. Now, over on the left side of the steering wheel at the top, you have a button for your high beams. You want to flash your high beams, that's how you do it with a button on the wheel. You also, over here, have controls for the cruise control system in this car, and yes, this car has cruise control. Despite being a hyper-focused, lightweight performance supercar, it still has the creature comfort of cruise control. You also also have previous track and next track buttons at the bottom on the left side, which is of course useful as a stereo control. But I skipped one on the left side, and that would be your drive mode. This dial here allows you to change different drive modes in the car, and there are quite a few. One of them is marked V, and that is VMAX mode, which lowers down the car and pulls in all active aero components to make it as slippery as possible so you can go as fast as possible. There's also W, which stands for wet mode. If you ever drive this in the wet, you want the traction controls to be as operating as possible, you go to that. N stands for normal. That's your normal mode. Then you have S, which is sport mode. And then you have T, which is track mode. And the cool thing about all of these drive modes is they all create significant changes in the gauge
stage cluster screen. The screen is linked to the drive mode, and each time you change the mode, it changes the screen to something totally different and totally specific to that drive mode. So sport gives you a sportier display with more performance-oriented items. Normal gives you a more normal traditional gauge cluster display, and track, well, that's especially track-focused, as you can see. Now, as you can imagine, when you change the drive mode, it does more than just adjust the gauge cluster screen, and that's especially obvious when you go into track mode. You do that, and the car instantly lowers itself and sticks out its rear wing, and I mean instantly take a look to see it in action. Now that is crazy. Most cars use electronics to go into track mode to lower themselves or extend a rear wing. This uses hydraulics so it can happen instantly, and as you saw, it does indeed do that. Now, the interesting thing about track mode is you can't switch out of it until you start driving. It happens so immediately that Ford was worried. You're in a cars and coffee, you show this thing off in track mode, and then you switch to normal mode. It happens so fast someone might get their hand pinched by the spoiler closing, so they only let you switch out of track mode when the car is moving and that pinch risk is gone. Kind of ridiculous, but that is the situation. You can't just switch in and out of track mode while the car is stopped. Now, the other notable change to this completely crazy alien steering wheel is the paddle shifters, which you can see are these cool metal paddles, quite large. They feel nice. They feel nice to pull and they have these holes in them, which I guess emphasizes their sportiness, their lightweight design, but that is a basic overview of the crazy steering wheel in this car. Now the funny thing is, as crazy as the steering wheel is, as totally different as it is from basically any other car, a lot of the other stuff in this interior is straight out of other Fords, like the headlight control. You can see over here, this switch bank is in basically every other modern Ford, including the power trunk button, although here they've changed the icon to actually resemble a Ford GT, which is a nice touch. But take a look at the window switches. These are the exact same ones you had in the Ford Explorer. Same deal with the power lock and unlock buttons, same as other Ford models, and the power mirror controls, just lifted out of a regular Ford. Even the electronic door release button, this button here, you push it and the door electronically releases and then you can push it open the rest of the way. Even that button, you're thinking, well, that's got to be unique to this car because what other Ford has electronic doors? The answer is the Lincoln Continental does, and it uses this same button as the new Ford GT for its electronic door release as well. Although it's worth pointing out there is also this manual strap that you can use in case the door popper isn't working, you need to get out, pull on the strap and that will pop the door open. Even the gear selector is shared with other Ford models. This dial is what they use in basically every other Ford to shift into gear, and they're using it in the Ford GT supercar as well. I guess if it works, just keep using it. Now, with that said, there are some other interesting controls in here that are Ford GT specific and worth pointing out, like the start-stop button, which is bright red and angled towards the driver here in the center. You also have a few buttons in the middle that hazard lights as you can see, traction control off, you have the axle lifter here, you push that and the nose lifts, and my favorite central button is suspension with the letter C, that puts the car in comfort suspension mode. In case you're tired of getting beaten up by this thing, press that button and you go into comfort. I love the fact that the default is not comfort, but if you want to concede and get more comfortable, you can always push that button. But maybe the most interesting thing in the center console here, instead of these buttons, is just just how close the seats are. You can see they're only a few inches apart in this interior. No room for a giant center console storage area. The seats are right next to each other, and that has to do with this car's teardrop shape. Like I showed you before, it gets very narrow, even in the seat area, to maximize aerodynamics, and that meant the seats had to be placed tremendously close to each other. In fact, all of the packaging in this interior had to be really well thought out. Another good example is the climate climate control vents, there are none on the dashboard. You can see no climate control vents at all. The sides, the center, it just doesn't have them. Instead, they're integrated into the door panels. This is where your climate control vents are, and that allowed Ford to have a narrower dashboard. Let them keep this cockpit area as small as possible in order to maximize aerodynamics. 
And speaking of climate control in this car, also worth pointing out the controls themselves, which are interesting. They're mounted right here in the center. You can see airflow, your temperature, your fan speed, and even the recirculating air button has an image of a Ford GT, which is cool, but pretty standard climate controls there. Next to that, you have a central touchscreen, which again is actually fairly standard. It's a smaller version of Ford Sync system, operates a lot like other Ford Sync systems, just again, smaller on a smaller screen, but it works reasonably well. Therefore, you have pretty good infotainment in this car, especially compared to supercar rivals at this time, which kind of lagged behind. This system is better since it was well, developed for mainstream cars. It has a lot of functionality. Other items worth pointing out in this interior, the sun visors are insanely small, but they're there in case you need a little break from the sun. You also have this little plaque over on the dashboard that says GT and then K043. The K stands for the model year of the car. So in VIN numbers of cars that are sold here in North America, the 10th digit identifies the model year. And for 2019, that was K. And so they took that and put that on this little plaque. And then this is the 43rd car in 2019, so K043. Also love the fact that you have an American flag there, despite the fact that this very American supercar was built in Canada. One other notable item here is the sheer amount of carbon fiber. All of these cars had a lot of carbon fiber, including their bodies, but this Ford GT in particular is a rare carbon series model that had more exposed carbon than basically every other new Ford GT. The carbon series cars came standard with carbon fiber wheels, as you can see. That is a pretty impressive touch, very expensive, but it helps save weight in a place where it really matters. My favorite thing though about this carbon series car is the stripes going down the center of the car in carbon fiber. Those aren't like painted on or added on. Instead, the rest of the car is painted and they leave those stripes unpainted so they look like carbon fiber stripes, but actually they're just exposed carbon. The entire body looks like that until they paint it. And in this car, they just don't paint that part. Unpainted carbon stripes in the Ford GT carbon series. All right, time to drive the new Ford GT, and I'm here with this car's owner and seller, Carl Brower. I feel like we've been here before. Dude. We have been here before. So Carl sold me my 2005 Ford GT, and I've owned it for five wonderful years. And he bought this, and he's had this now almost since then, basically. About four years, over four years. So Carl sold my car, bought this one, and he was the original owner of this car, and he's driven it 10,000 miles. Now, I've already reviewed the new Ford GT actually a couple times, and so I'll link those below for sort of a more in-depth look at the driving experience. I wanna talk with Carl about how it's been owning this car for four years. What's it been like? You got 10,000 miles. No one has 10,000 miles in these. How has it been? Well, it's, it's been amazing. It's exactly what I think people should do with cars like this. Uh, I'm going to bite my tongue and not talk about what I think about all the people who went through the same application process as me, claimed they were going to be great Ford ambassadors, and are selling their cars with less than 50 miles on them. Right. Uh, we just won't talk about them, because if we did, that would not be good. Right. But uh, Maybe we'll come back to that. <laughs> but, but I genuinely believe that uh, this car, like the 05, is an incredible driving experience. Uh, it's got hydraulic assisted steering, which yep. most cars don't have, and you can tell. I, I'm biased, fine. I know like five other people who've driven a lot of cars and know their thing, who've said this car's got among the best steering yep. feel of any car in the world. I agree. Driven. It's freaky because as much as the 05 gets attention, this thing gets even more attention. Yeah. And that is just crazy that you get that kind of uh, reaction when you drive this car. Yeah. People love it. They freak out. Uh, you're the star of every cars and cars yeah, you go yeah, to. Uh -huh. Why are you selling it? You know, it's, it's really tough for me to let this car go. I've done everything I could imagine in this car, just like I did everything I could imagine in the other car. The truth is, whether, when you've taken the cars to the track, which I've done with both the cars, when you've taken them on long road trips, which I've done with both cars, you've gone on rallies, you've gone to how many dozens and dozens and dozens of cars and coffee. And at 10,000 miles, I've got more experience behind the wheel of a new Ford GT than probably 99, 95% of new Ford GT owners. Owners, yeah, for sure. And I feel like, okay, I'm good. This car right. has done everything I've wanted it to do. 
and I've experienced everything I've wanted to experience, and I am kind of an aficionado of cars and an enthusiast of cars, and there's other cars Ready on to my move list, on. you know? Yeah. I've got other cars that I've never owned. And all yeah. That. What has it been like to own this car? It's been extremely rewarding uh, and not nearly as troublesome as I feared, you know? Yeah. I've got 10,000 miles on it, and there has been no major issues with this car. I'm surprised the condition this car is in after 10,000 miles. I, I mean, if That was true of the 05 also, and I've made it way worse. <laughs> I, I, I'm a little OCD. You saw that if you go, I've got a video on my YouTube channel, you see the delivery and the car rolls out of the reliable truck and into the detail shop right. that wrapped it. The car never went over 20 miles per hour yeah. without having clear, clear bra. I mean, on. there's just, there's no like in cuts in too. the carbon fiber, the, the you know. Interior, there's, there's clear bra on the carbon fiber door panels. Oh really? And, and on the side of the console. Yeah. So oh, that's you, smart. You, just seeing the car up close. Does it look like it's got 10,000 right. miles? No, I, I agree with you. I think it looks just like a brand new zero mile. I'm like quite impressed with it. Kind of yeah. intimidated by it, honestly. Yeah. Would prefer a little wear. Would make, <laughs> would make it a little <laughs> easier to drive. drive. Yeah. See, now you know how I felt every time I drove it. All right, cool. Thanks for talking. Good luck with the auction. Thanks for letting me take out the car. It was great. Thanks for your help, Doug. It's been a real adventure. Has selling you my last one and now you helping me sell Yeah, I'm not screen. buying this one. Yeah, I'm I know. I know you're, you know you're going to get a lot of questions. It's like, dude, match set. <laughs> No, I'm all, I'm all good. I've spent enough on cars lately. Yeah, you have. And so that's the new Ford GT. This is a truly impressive car, one of the greats. Its performance is amazing, and so are its quirks and features. And you can buy this Ford GT on cars and bids. Now, I've already given the new Ford GT a Doug score, but let's take a quick look at where it stands against and some other comparable modern supercars. And this is where the new Ford GT stands at a 70 out of 100, which places it in fantastic company against other modern supercars. Even though it's just a Ford with just a V6, this is a seriously special car that goes toe to toe with some of the greatest exotic sports cars of all time, mainly because this is one of the greatest exotic sports cars. The new Ford GT is rare, special, fast, daring, and full of quirks. And I'm always happy to get some seat time in one.